All right, guys, so I'm sorry this is going to be my third video for the week, um, and I'm just really doing my best to make sure everybody's sick of me by now. Um, but uh, th this video is somewhat time sensitive, and I just found, a found out about it this morning. So um, I thought I'd put something out there because I do think it is relevant to those in the axe sphere. Um, yes, Vaughn and Bushnell is closing its doors. They're going out of business. Um, one of the last few historic uh, axe companies out there. Um, and they made other things. They made things besides axes. And, you know, a, a couple of years ago, I, I did notice, I was pretty disappointed to see that while they kept manufacturing their smaller axes, um, their, their boys' axes and larger did start to be manufactured in India. Um, and I really did not, I did not like to see that. Um, that was that was somewhat sad, and and maybe it was um, a, a sign of of what was to be when they started shipping things over um, to be manufactured overseas and then importing them to be sold under the Vaughn and Bushnell line uh, in, instead of manufacturing a product here in the United States. Um, I, this is going to be really tough for Bushnell, Illinois. Um, Vaughn and Bushnell employed, I believe, over a hundred and thirty people, and Bushnell is. A town of just a couple thousand. So you think of how many families that's going to impact. Um, you think of how many kids are in the school system because their parents work uh, at, uh, at Vaughn and Bushnell. You think of, you know, just the tax revenue, um, you know, the, the real estate. Um, I mean, wow, this is going to blow a hole in Bushnell, Illinois. Um, and and it, it is somewhat amazing that a company the size of Vaughn and Bushnell was able to remain in a small town like Bushnell. Um, I mean, but for crying out loud, the town's named after the company. Um, you know, it, it, it just goes to show you that uh, back in the old days, you could be a small town company. You could be a big company in a small town. And there were lots of them, as long as you had a railroad depot. Bushnell has a railroad depot. If you look them up on Google Maps, um, they do also, one of their other major employ, employ, employers is an Archer Daniels Midland grain elevator. So, um, and, and I kind of grew up on the plains where the railroads were critically important. Um, and a lot of people don't fully, I think, appreciate how important railroads are to those small towns. If you're a farmer, you've got to be near a railroad depot to ship your grain. Um, if you're near a grain elevator, you got to have a railroad. Um, but if you're a if you're a small to medium sized manufacturer, we have hundreds of years of railroad regulation that govern equal access and what the railroad has to do to enable you to do business on on a railroad. Um, the railroad has to pick your stuff up. They're a common carrier, um, and so for a uh, for a business like Vaughn and Bushnell, they could manufacture all of these tools and all of this equipment um, in a very small town. Just to, as long as they had a railroad depot nearby. And, and so they, they hung on for all of these years because of that reason. Now, Vaughn and Bushnell has been around since the 1800s. They started in Chicago. Um, just just my, little, my little snippet of history here. They started in Chicago making post augers. Um, supposed to make uh, uh, digging, digging fence post holes easier. Um, got some patents. When the Great Chicago Fire happened, um, they moved to Illinois, where they have been, I believe, since they moved to Illinois. They've been in, in Bushnell, Illinois. Um, it's been in the Vaughn family all this time, all this time. And they've seen, um, man, they, they, they've seen just all the wars. They, they've seen all the history. They've seen all the high energy prices. They've seen you know, shipping, manufacturing overseas, um, the, the, the purchasing of, of every last bit of uh, manufacturing um, uh, equipment and, uh, and all the names that have gone, geez, I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. Um, they've seen all of that. And, and finally, I don't know what did them in, but I, I think probably the rising interest rates did them in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure they had some kind of operating loan uh, that was indexed to, um, uh, to the APR, um, probably a, man, you know, it, it kind of floats as, they, as they'd say, and I'm sure they saw their borrowing costs go from, you know, three or 4% a year or two ago to, you know, probably nine or 10% now. Um, 
And so I'm sure they're just getting crushed by interest rates. Um, you know, and, and you, uh, you look at the high interest rates and then you look at kind of a mediocre or poor um, economy and a, and a poor forecast and it, it just makes it a real challenging environment to, manu uh, to operate in um, as a manufacturer. So um, I'm sure they just got in trouble with debt. And uh, now there was a last ditch effort for Marshalltown, which is another um, U.S. manufacturer. They're in Marshalltown, Iowa, I believe. And you look at the importance that these businesses have to small town America. Marshalltown, Marshalltown, Iowa. Bushnell, a Vaughn and Bushnell. I mean, the towns are named after the company. I mean, they employ 130 people in a town of, I want to say Bushnell might be under 3,000 people. Um, and you got to think a lot of those are going to be retired farmers. Um, a huge chunk are going to be retired farmers. So this is going to blow a hole in the workforce. I mean, the people that are actually raising families. Um, spending money, building businesses, providing services. Um, I mean, that's the, that's the heart of your town right there is, is the young people that have families and they're working and paying taxes. Um, you know, they're making their money as opposed to, um, you know, they've already made their money and now they've kind of settled down. Um, retirees don't spend like uh, people with families do. So it's just going to be just going to be devastating. But Marshalltown tried to buy Vaughn and Bushnell, I believe, for five million dollars. Um, and they just couldn't swing it. Um, the town, I, I think Marshalltown might have said we can do four and a half million. And and then Vaughn and Bushnell said we can't do it. But uh, the town tried to kick in something like five hundred thousand dollars in incentives, but um, but just couldn't do it. Um, now, my read on that situation when you have a an asset heavy business like Vaughn and Bushnell, um, they need to borrow a lot of money. Um, you've got a bank that was involved there. You've got a bank that was looking at their, their lines of credit and their operating loans. Um, Marshalltown would love to purchase all of the forges, all the ovens, all the sprayers and equipment. Uh, you know, Marshalltown would love to purchase all the assets of the business but I'm sure Vaughn and Bushnell is in over its head. Um, I'm sure that they owe a bunch of money, that the money that's coming in does not equal the amount that's going out. And you've got a bank that's looking over Vaughn and Bushnell's shoulder and saying, if you sell all of your assets for, um, you know, four, four million, four and a half million, you're still going to owe you know, X number of dollars. And then what is a manufacturer without all of the equipment to do their manufacturing? Well, they're just a name. You know, that's it. They're just a name. And, you know, what is a Vaughn and Bushnell name worth without any of the ability to manufacture Vaughn and Bushnell products? Nothing. I mean, it's some value, but certainly not enough, I'm sure, to pay off the loans. Um, and, and I've seen this happen before. It happens a lot in farming families. Um, where you've got a dad and a mom that's been farming for, you know, 50, 60 years and their parents farmed and they're on the land and, you know, they, they go to their kid and the kid says, I, you know, I'd love to keep farming. I want your combine. I want your tractor. I want your disc and I want, you know, all the stuff. I want the grain, the, the, the I, I want everything, all the equipment that you have, but I don't want any of your debt. <laughs> I mean, if you guys are farm families, you know exactly how that goes, you know, and the parents say, well, I'm not going to keep making payments on all of my debt without any of my equipment. And then you've got a bank that comes in and says, hold on, nobody's doing anything without our approval. It's our money. And now you, you know exactly what's going on with Vaughn and Bushnell. Um, it's just real sad. I mean, we have Estwing. We have we used to have Vaughn and Bushnell. Uh, we still have them for probably a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. And, and we have Council Tool. Estwing, Vaughn and Bushnell, Council Tool. Who I, I believe those are the only three scalable axe companies. You know, we've got blacksmiths that forge axes, but, you know, I, I guess we've got Hoffman, but they're in a different category. And, you know, you've got other guys that make, you know, small scale stuff. Um but that's it. That's, you know, there were three and now there are two. Um, and, and I tell you what, this should surprise no one, no one at all. And I, I 
have really no criticism for Vaughn and Bushnell. Um, they were set up to fail by the people that make the rules in our economy. Um, you know, I, I, I was, I, I have maybe a little bit of history. Um, I lived through and, you know, was kind of paying attention to what was going on during, you know, all the free trade stuff that happened in, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And, you know, you're, you're admitting China, the World Trade Organization, um, why we ever did that. I'm, I just... Um, you know, not to get too political, but I think it's, it's, you know, sort of, um, I'm probably going to get myself demonetized on YouTube speaking against the, <laughs> the powers that be. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was all destined to happen, uh, from, from the late nineties to the early two thousands. And then you can go back even further to the seventies and eighties when we set up all of our corporate rules to promote this kind of vulture capitalism, um, Purchase the business, cancel the pensions, sell the assets, um, put the screws to everybody, uh, all, all the little guys who are just trying to trying to make a good, honest living, and then line your suit pockets. Um, I mean, it's really just modern carpet bagging uh, is, is what it is. You know, here in the South, we still kind of talk about carpet bagging. Um, you know, it, it's just... Uh, and, and then if you really get into the bigger picture. Um, all of these, you know, w once we admitted China to the World Trade Organization, and, you know, here I go on my soapbox, you know, have another drink, you know, I will, it's coffee. You know, we had these enormous trade deficits with China. Um, and so what that meant is you had a bunch of Chinese companies who had way more U.S. dollars than they could spend in China. I mean, imagine it's it's um, they they had all of their needs met and excess U.S. dollars. So what did they do? They had nothing else to do with the money other than to purchase U.S. treasuries and American assets. Um, and so they had every incentive to go over to the U.S. and purchase our hardware stores, purchase our hardware manufacturers, purchase purchase all of the things that create value in our country. And now, 20 years later, we are seeing that um, American companies can't get American products into our local retailers. Um, I mean, that's what happened. You look at Home Depot, are you going to see Vaughn and Bushnell? Nope. Are you going to see Estwing? Nope. Are you going to see Council Tool? Nope. You go to Lowe's, same thing. Ace Hardware is a little bit better. You can find some council tool stuff there. You know, they're local. Um, you go to your, you know, best value hardware, although I think Ace might have purchased best value a couple years ago, um, or great value. I, I forget. Okay, so I, I had a couple goats outside that were just driving me nuts, um, so I had to put a stop to that. But, you know, like I was trying to say, this is the result of what happens when American manufacturers cannot get their products into American retailers. They're not even American retailers anymore. Um, you know, you look at what Home Depot is doing and has done to their, their product lines. You look at what, uh, what Lowe's is doing. They're kicking out all the American manufacturers and they're putting in Chinese, Taiwanese, um, Indian. Uh, you, you know, it's just... Um, and, I, I, you know, I wish that we would put a stop to that, but there's a part of me that says it's too late. Um, we maybe could have done something 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. Um, but, but by now it's, I, I don't know what can be done. I mean, everybody's talking about how we need more people in the trades, how we need, um, we need people that know how to fix things. We need people that know how to do things. Everybody can't be on a computer in an office doing a job that could be replaced by artificial intelligence. Um, I mean, and by the way, those jobs, those are the first jobs on the chopping block. I mean, it, it, anybody that has any kind of professional experience, and, and I do, I've done a lot of different things in my life, knows that, I mean, really a, about 15% of all of those people in those types of jobs do all the work. Uh, you could eliminate 60% of those jobs tomorrow and nobody would skip a beat. Um, why we have them, 
I don't know, largely to support the managerial class that would have nobody else to manage if those jobs went away. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just, a, but the, at the same time that our government and our economies and our businesses are saying that we need more people in the trades, we just keep enacting policies that close down these businesses that hire the trades. I mean, it's just, it, it's insanity at the highest level. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know what can be done. Um, but another one bites the dust. Uh, I do own some Vaughn and Bushnell stuff. Um, I do own some Dasco things. They also own Dasco, but, um, you know, yeah. Um, if you want some Vaughn and Bushnell, time to buy it before it's gone. Chances are you're going to find it in an Ace Hardware or a local hardware store that you're, if, if you have one of those, if you're lucky enough. Um, I've got a hardware store, um maybe 45 minutes south of me that I do know sells some Vaughn and Bushnell things. So I might just have to make a trip down there. Um, they have some of the oyster hatchets and some of the smaller hatchets. Um, so I might have to check that out. But uh, but yeah, get it while it's gone. Another one bites the dust. So um, um, I hope this was informative, um, if not a little bit of a bummer. But, uh, but thanks for watching and I'll catch you for the next.